great. If you want to see something, you need to come here. I'm here at the uh, Dynamis Glory Dome here in Abuja, Nigeria. It's our first time in this building, but it's just amazing. From the one I was released today, it's impactful. I go with it into the world. When you come here, you experience God wrong. This is beyond wonderful. I love it. In the service today, it's, it's awesome. All just as it has always been. Today is awesome. Starting from the the, 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 the corporate worship, the choir ministration, to the world, the fire impartation. It has been. It was awesome. It, I, I cannot. It cannot be better anywhere. Today's service was very very awesome. I experienced a mighty outpour of the presence of God. In fact, uh, it, there is a great revival in today's service. It's very, very awesome. I experienced the mighty power of God in today's service. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. And I want to thank God for Donami's Christian ministry. The Lord has been faithful. After the lockdown, it has really been scary coming back to church. But to God be the glory today coming in, the safety measures are really well put in place. A lot of people are saved by the mercies of God. And I also want to thank God for the ministration today because I was touched. I was, my spirit was highly lifted. I look forward to next Sunday. It's been another wonderful Sunday. I want to thank the Lord for His grace, for His mercy, and for His servant that is using mightily in this place. The experience is, was just wonderful. As you're coming in, the disinfectant is working. You'll be disinfected. The sanitizers are here, then um, the digital um, temperature checks are also available. So all the protocols that the ND NCDC has put in place are on ground and functioning. Your safety is guaranteed. In addition with the spiritual atmosphere that also keeps you divinely preserved and protected from the virus. I want to uh, appreciate God for this service today. It has been awesome. And been in the presence of God. It has been a very long time and ever since we resumed the post-COVID-19 service, it has been great in the presence of God today. Oh, it's very, very wonderful being back to church because during lockdown, people are getting tired of staying at home. So being back to church was very, very it's a blessing to us. Being back to church is a blessing. It's a real blessing to us. We thank God for that. Genesis chapter 32, verse 24 to 28. And Jacob was left alone, 
and they wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him and he said let me go for the day break it. and he said I will not let thee go except thou bless me bless me and he said what is thy name and he said Jacob and he said thy name shall be called no more Jacob but Israel for as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9 to 10 and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren and his mother called his name Jabez saying because I bear him with sorrow and Jabez called on the name on the God of Israel saying oh that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thy hand might be with me and that thou would keep me from evil that it may not grieve me and God granted him that which he requested. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. It's our blessing Sunday in the month of prayer. So the subject is prayer and the blessing of God. Prayer and the blessing of God. Our objective is to understand the relationship between prayer and the blessing of God. By way of introduction, there are three things that are very important to know. That is number one, the place of prayer is the place of the blessing. The place of prayer is the place of the blessing. Secondly, prayerful people are blessful people. Prayerful people are blessful. Now that blessful word is a coinage, but blessful people. They are blessed people. Example shows in scripture, Abraham the blessed was Abraham the prayerful. If you remember Genesis chapter 19 and in verse 27, Abraham was the one who stood before the Lord always in the morning at the place of prayer. If you remember Genesis chapter 18, verse 17 to 19, Abraham was the one who stood at the place of intercession for Sodom and Gomorrah. Is there anything I can do that I will hide from Abraham? God is speaking. For I know him that he will command his children. And then you go further to verse the next verse, God was speaking about Sodom and Gomorrah, the cry of Sodom, and Abraham was interceding for Sodom. That is, if you take it over from verse 23 to verse 25, if you find 50 righteous in Sodom, will you deliver? And he was in the process of intercession. Abraham, the prayerful, was Abraham, the blessed. The first passage we read was the passage concerning Jacob. In Genesis chapter 32 from verse 24 to 28. At the place of prayer, the blessing landed on, let's say it like this. Jacob prayed his way into the blessing. He literally prayed his way into the blessing. He prayed his way into the blessing. So the, the place of prayer is the place of the blessing. Prayerful people are blessful people. And thirdly, prayer changes. Changes both people and things. Prayer changes people. Prayer changes things. We saw the changes in the life of Jacob on, in our text. And the changes around his circumstance. Our topic for the month has been prayer for supernatural shift and the word for today is prayer and the blessing and God has showered great blessings upon us. We looked at the life of Jabez in 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9 to 10 where Jabez prayed and his story changed and we have learned that in the place of prayer 
your destiny can change, your story can change, curses can be broken, spells can be dismantled, everything that has held you down for several years, whatever has followed you as a generational cause can be broken in the place of prayer. The man of God has told us extensively today to pray aggressively, to pray decisively, and to pray knowing that God is more than able to do everything for us. When a man prays, you know, there is a deletion of negative marks on the life of, 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 of the man that prays. And secondly, there is a, um, a change of identity. And the thirdly, when a man prays, there is the, there's, there is enlargement of life and destiny. You see, uh, um, an example in the Bible was Jabez. When he prayed, he was meant to be great. He was born great, but nothing amount to anything significant in his life until he prayed and asked God to enlarge his coast. And we saw that from nothingness, he became a nation. And, you know, you know, you know, we realized that the city was named after him called the city of Jabez, where the scribes, administrators, and the management, you know, personnel managers were able to come out through him, through his loins, by the power of prayer. And I also realized that when a man prays, there is amplification of honor upon him. And then fifth, uh, uh, when a man prays, we realize that there's a total realization of life and destiny, purpose and all of that. And then the man of God also went further to let us know that how do we realize the functions of prayer? One is by pressing into his presence because when a man prays, he, the oil that mines the fuel, which, trans, which transfers a man from the place of backwardness, from nothingness into the place of destiny fulfillment, are uh, released at the place of prayer. And at the altar of prayer again, when a man prays, a man who prays carries permanently the presence of God. And the presence of God equals the blessings of God upon the level of a prayer. Like praying into your blessing, praying professionally, that is knowing what God can do, praying decisively, they praying emotion, I mean, uh, desperately and praying obediently. All this I didn't know, but today, thank God, I have it. I have it all over. I have it. I can use it now. The word, the prayer, the month of prayer. Uh, Daddy told us that prayer it brings the presence of God, and the presence of God tackles all the issues around your life. He said, prayer. In prayer, you can assess the responsibilities that, that God needs you, so that you can assess. Your, your, your provisions. You, 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 in the prayer, you do the, you get the responsibilities in order to assess God's provision for you. So it's a, a great thing. Uh, it, it teaches us to be alert in prayerfulness. In today's preaching, he used um, Jabez as a scriptural example. Where Jabez was able to pray himself out. He, he was able to pray himself out. In the first service, he made use of Jacob. Jacob prayed himself out to his blessings, and Jabez also pray himself out to his blessings. In the book of 1 uh, Chronicles chapter 3, from verse 9 to 10, he says that Jabez, his name was Sorrow. Then through prayers, he turned his name into blessing, and his, he, and his condition changed, and everything about him changed. And God made him, him and God made him a, a nation. His name was used as a scribe, a kind of, his name was changed totally. And God made him a great man in his, in his town. In the church service, we learned that um, there are certain factors that will assist you in getting insight from the Word of God. We learned that the, uh, the, the character of meditation is one of those things that will help you to get insight from the Word of God. We also learned today that the presence of the Holy Spirit, who, whose official title is the teacher will also help you to get insight from the Word of God. Then the atmosphere of joy is one of the things that will tremendously also assist you in getting insight from the Word of God. One of the take-homes from the message today, it talks about the fasting. Fasting draws you closer and makes your, uh, your, spir your spiritual mind sensitive to God. In conclusion, we realize on today's service that you can pray effectively by praying revolutionary, praying decisively, and praying with expectation. So prayer 
There is nothing a man will achieve. There is not even Jesus himself before he began his ministry at, at age 30. He went to the place of prayer and he was commissioned. And so, before he, he fulfilled his ultimate you know, you know, purpose by going to the cross, he also prayed and strength and encouragement were released on him and he was able to fulfill their sins. So as, as Christians, as children of God, we can do nothing without prayer. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? I prophesy to you today what God has said about your life must happen. It must work. It must come to pass. What God has said concerning Nigeria, it must happen. What God has said concerning the church, it must happen. Shout the loudest Amen. Take your seat. Two things very quickly as we begin to round off on the subject of realizing destiny. And two things, number one, it is the nullification. At the place of prayer, destiny, our destiny is realized, number one, by the nullification of negative histories. I already mentioned two in the first service and I'm not going into that. The nullification of negative histories and pasts. The things behind you that does not want you to become what God wants you to become. What was fighting Jabez was what happened to him at his birth. They called him Jabez because his mother said, I bear him in sorrow. There was too much, I don't know, I can't tell the details of what happened at Jabez's birth. Maybe the mother's marriage with his father failed. Maybe somebody died when he was born. But there was something around his past that was now fighting his future. At the place of prayer is scattered. Anything that has followed you from your birth that is fighting the plan of God for your life, in this month of prayer, they are scattered. Take your seat. It's the nullification of negative histories and pasts. And secondly, it is the collapse of destiny obstacles. The collapse of destiny obstacles. Things that are roadblocks. We pray, I think we prayed about some of them yesterday. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be leveled. It is the collapse of destiny obstacles. Roadblocks. Friends, that's it. Because this month of prayer is your month final. And so I want to encourage us, those of us that are still at home, you can see that we have the sanitizers around. This is the third service and we are observing social distances. We want to encourage you to be part of the service and part of what God is doing. Since I joined this commission, my life has changed. God has blessed me tremendously. He has blessed my family. He has given me uncommon favor. And the grace of God upon the man of God is changing lives here. So I want to encourage you to be here next Sunday to join us, be a partaker of the blessing of God, be a partaker of his mercy, and above all, to join us in the place of prayer so that your destiny can move. This is our month to pray and to move drastically, dramatically, and dimensionally. God bless you. I want to let you all know that the myths surrounding, you know, you know, you know, you know the fact that churches are not observing, churches are not safe, for, 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 for gathering in this wake of, 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 uh, of the pandemic uh, is not, it's, it's not true. Because from my experience here, I realized that um, these are uh, first you know, class um, um, disinfectants you know, that are mounted all over here. You don't get in here without, without passing through the chamber and as part of the chamber, you are disinfected. I have my, my, um, my face mask here. You were not allowed to enter in there without this. I just remove it now so I can talk, um, I don't know, friendly. So uh, everything is going on normal here. Service here is, is okay. Life is safe here. So please don't be afraid. Come to church and be part of God's move. Thank you very much. So we are advising you, those of you that are still at home who think that um, for one reason or the other you shouldn't be in church, we, ask, we, are, we are advising that you desist from sin because there is nothing like being in the assembly of the people of God. That is the plan of God for humanity. 
the, there are several instances of churches in the scripture. And because that has been established, we should not allow anything derail it. In fact, we are told in the service today that even if men fail, the plan of God will never, never fail. The plan of God is for us to keep gathering as a body, as a church, and we have kept all protocols, and we are divinely preserved. We should be encouraged to come to church. So I advise us and I invite us to be in church on Wednesday and also for the preservation service and continue to come to church from day to day as the protocols will permit us. Thank you. I encourage people at home that they should come back to church, that church is fully open. They should come back to church. I encourage them to come back. Corona will not stop them. Corona can never stop the word of God. It can, it can never stop the preaching of God. It can never stop the movement of God on earth. I want to encourage people that are still staying at home because of fear of Corona that in the presence of God, there's nothing like Corona. Corona doesn't exist in the presence of God. The Bible says in the presence of God, there's liberty. I'm encouraging them to come back, to start coming back to church, where they will receive their absolute healing. The fumigation point of entrance, the social distancing, the wearing of masks is awesome. I don't think there is any better arrangement anywhere that I've seen here. Please come to serve it. So we see, come and see for yourself. I want to officially invite those that have not been here. I'm telling you, you are missing. This place is awesome. This place is great. This place is powerful. If you come here, you'll never regret it. So I invite you out there. Where have you been? That's the question I have for you. Where have you been? Please come here and visit and come and worship with us in Jesus' name. I invite all of you to come. I invite everyone to come to church because church is a place where you go and there will be a growth in your life. Everything in your life will change. Like, unlike me, people, if people talk about me, say, ah, Mary Ann, everything about your life has changed. Where are you going to? Where do you worship? I told them I worship in Dunamis. And since I started worshiping in this place, God has changed my life, both maritally and otherwise. For the safety measure here, it is awesome. Face mask, the social distance is there, and the spray when you are entering the church, the entrance, is awesome. And for those sitting out there, and I don't want to come, come to church because of the pandemic, I tell you, please come. Because my Bible told me that, if you serve the Lord our God, you take sickness, you bless our bread, take sickness and disease away from us. So if you come, definitely the God will bless you and take this sickness and disease away from us in Jesus' name. I say the Lord bless you. Adonai keep you. Ay, 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 ay. El Shaddai make his face to shine upon you. As you live here today, into this second week of July, into this third quarter of the year, this second half of 2020, I say the Lord bless you. Hey! I am that I am, keep you. Adonai, make his face to shine upon you. Unto you, the Lord lift up His countenance on you and give you peace in everything you do. I say, the Lord bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, and keep you. Oh, Adonai, make His face to shine upon you. From the one I was released today, it's impactful. I go with it into the one. When you come here, you experience God wrong. This is beyond wonderful. I love it.